This video is about creating a stylized hairstyle based on my method of creating hair strands with the help of a custom geometry notes modifier that I've showed you in the last video. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend doing so. Uh, you can go and watch it there. Or there. You've watched it? Good, okay. I'm not gonna show a full process. I'm gonna assume that you know a little bit of hair grooming. This video will be more so of a overview of my workflow, how we can practically use this custom node to create hair, and how I set up a workspace so that the grooming process is as smooth as possible and as fast as possible, but that of course depends on your experience. Okay, I have to state something here. This is more for creating static sculptures. You can definitely animate this, and I have done it in the past, uh, but this is a whole video on its own, which I might make in the future. But for now, it's this. And as for simulations, as a dynamic hair that moves as your character moves in an animation, well, that's a whole other can of worms that we're not gonna open right now. As I said, I might in the future. This is purely how we can sculpt the hair shape, okay? So you've created your character, I have mine here, and uh, let's decapitate her, focus on the hair only. And now comes the part where we create hair. First, we need a base mesh for our strands to attach, so we're gonna steal some geometry from our character here. So in edit mode, we can select part of our scalp, and I suggest you grab more than you think you need. So I'm gonna select here and leave stuff like ears and eyelids. We need a fairly smooth geometry. And obviously this is scalp here. If you're doing a beard, you would get the chin or other parts. Then we go Shift D to duplicate the selection. Right click to cancel. P to separate. And selection. Now, this mesh has all the whatever shape keys or modifier our character had, so we're gonna clear all that by pressing Ctrl A, Visual Geometry to Mesh. We need a clean piece of mesh. If you have a pose like I have here, you're gonna do this uh, operation in pose position. The reason we did this and not used our character mesh is that now we can use Alt S in edit mode to insert that mesh inside of the head, like this much, so that the root of our hairs uh, are embedded inside of the head. And you'll see later why we do this. Our base mesh has to have a UV map, and it has whatever map our character had, but I don't like to use this one, uh, so I'm gonna clear it and make a new UV map for it. Just simply clear all seams, then U, unwrap, and this is gonna do the job. Now, finally, we get to add hair, okay? Select the base mesh, go add, curves, empty hair. But first, because we are making a long hairstyle, let's put more points on our curve. I'll go 20. It's gonna make it much easier to groom. And set the length to two, and make sure this count is one. Then click on the mesh. Right away, we're gonna move it into a collection, and this collection we have all our hair strands. Uh, also, rename it to strand 0.001 or something like that, so that we have uh, auto numbering uh, as we duplicate stuff. You can also rename the curve data. Then, from the asset browser, we drag our stylized hair edit node on top of our hair. We need a profile curve. Uh, I've made some previously. They are also here in the asset browser and I'm just gonna bring them into my scene. I'd like to put them in a collection too and hide it from view and render. Then we can pick one from our modifier. But before we go any further, let's set a workspace for our hair editing so that working with this setup is uh, easier. Up here, we can hit this uh, plus and add a new general layout. Rename it to hair editing. Then let's move stuff around. 
up here I'm gonna have a image editor for any reference that I might have. This lower portion I'm gonna split in half and that first part in half as well. This one I'll make my outliner. This one I'm gonna leave the properties and move to the modifiers. And this will be geometry nodes. In here, zoom into the big blue float curve uh, node so that we can change the profile. And here we edit the modifier, rotations and stuff. The timeline we're gonna change to a asset browser so that we can import stuff. Okay, done. Before we do any hair grooming, we're gonna name our UV map uh, under output attributes and pick a material. We're gonna make a new one here. We don't have to do anything to the material right now, uh, just have it selected here. We do this so that when we duplicate hair strands, they all carry the UV attribute and material. Otherwise, if we forget, uh, we're gonna have to set them individually, one by one, later, and that's not fun. Ask me how I know. Then it's up to grooming. You're gonna use whatever process you normally use to create hair. Cool thing is we can use the slide tool, and if I move it around, it will stick to the base mesh, which is really useful. I can slightly nudge the position of the strand on the scalp. Use the comb. One thing I miss is using shift to smooth the curve. Uh, I think that should be the case, but no, holding shift does nothing. I have to select the smooth tool. That's a miss. If any Blender Dave is watching, please make it so that shift smooth. Let's say you don't like the rotation of the curve. We rotate it. Or just the root. We can twist it with the tip rotation and adjust with the mid. Now, I think the mid rotation has a bit too much influence, so let's come into the node tree and play with the flux of the mid mask. Now it won't have so much uh, influence towards the edges. If for some reason you have a very specific need, like let's say you want to rotate just here, in this specific area, we can make a custom rotation. Come to the geometry nodes, copy these uh, rotation nodes with Control Shift D, the ones for the mid. Cut the connection of the math node and then connect it to one of the free sockets of the other. Now this is an independent rotation. So let's bring the white part to the area we want. And remember the left side of the color ramp is the root. So let's focus it towards here, okay? Set this to ease for this case. And there, it rotates this part. I almost never have to do this, but if you do, well, that's how you make it. You could, if you wish, use a float curve instead of the color ramp, but I find this a bit clunkier for this application. Much easier to just move some flags around. And yeah, this is the biggest problem with this workflow. Uh, there's no way of doing this in the viewport. You have to dig around in the node tree. But as I said, I rarely have to do this. So it's fine at the end. Also, don't forget, we can still use the pre-made hair modifiers that come with Blender. The results we get are kind of unknown, uh, but I encourage you to just play around with these. Just drop them on top of the curve and play with the sliders and see what you get. Just make sure that our stylized hair modifier is last in the stack. These have to come before it. Some of them, like this curl, for example, are a bit sensitive to how many points uh, our curve has, uh, the ones we said in the beginning. If you find that you don't have enough and the strand looks kind of blocky, uh, you need more points. And as far as I know, there's no way to change the segments after we added the curve. Uh, we can't subdivide or add new points. Maybe you can, but the way I do it is in scope mode, just add a new curve, change the point count to something like 60, and click on this uh, length and shape. Then click somewhere near the root of the hair 
and it will add this new much smoother curve in roughly the same position. Then in edit mode, just delete the old curve and now this is uh, much smoother. And yeah, play around with these, they are very fun and some of them produce very nice results. So let's add another hair strand. We are not going to do this with this add, uh, because the new one will inherit all the rotation and scale of the original and the properties will be linked. The way we do this is go to object mode, shift D to duplicate and right click. Then immediately go to scope mode, the slide tool and move it. As you see, it created a new hair object and automatically numbered it. Now still, if I edit this, the other one changes. What we have to do is click on this two in the modifier. Uh, this will make a new separate settings so that when we edit this, the old one doesn't change. And this is how we populate our head with hair strands. Just select this one, edit it, then select another one and so on. After you have your hairstyle made, because you've picked your material beforehand, uh, when we've duplicated all the hair strands, they all have the same material set. Otherwise we have to set it one by one. When it comes to materials, uh, I'm gonna show you this whole UV thing. Our hair curves don't have UV coordinates, the way normal curves do. Uh, you can see when I preview the UV on this texture coordinate node, it's black, there's nothing. Because we've set up that vector as an output attribute from our nodes, we can use it as mapping coordinates for textures. Just use a attribute node and copy the same name uh, from the modifier. And really, I almost exclusively use this to map procedural noise textures. If I bring one in, use the attribute as a map, we can then plug a mapping node in between and if we scale this texture on the x-axis by something small, like 0 0.01, it makes an effect like uh, little hairs going along the curve. Then we can use this with color or roughness, bump, whatever. It makes a more hairy texture. Let's say you've added something to the model later, like I have this code. And if you notice that it intersects with the geometry, uh, it's really easy to nudge the hair to fix it. Uh, that's what I like about this method. You can make really fine adjustments. Just select, sculpt, move the shape, object. Really fast, really easy. And yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, that's how I make my hairstyles. I hope I'm not missing anything. I will show how we can make uh, animated and simulated here, but that's for a future video. See you there.